In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use functions as commands for the buttons in your Python TK Integri applications. And we're also gonna see how to use the Lambda if you need functions with arguments. By the way, before we get started, you can get the source code of some of my videos and support the channel at the same time. The link will be in the description. Down below, you can also find a few links to join amazing learning platforms to take your skills to the next level and a lot more. Go and check them out and thank you for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate you. So first of all, let's import tk into sdk as usual. All right, then the root window, just a simple 300 by 400 window, and then just this. So I don't want that to be resizable. All right. In this video, I'm not going to use a class structure, but on bigger projects, you definitely need to use it. Now let's actually do something like mainframe. So I'm going to create the mainframe where we're going to place a little button that we're going to use for the example. So let's actually do something like, you know, white, then mainframe, pack, fill, okay, both true I just like to make a mainframe and then inside the mainframe I actually put all the other widgets okay so basically this is the main container we'll configure zero wait one which is basically so that the mainframe stretches to cover the whole window and then down here I'm going to create the bottom one which is tk.button, the parent is the mainframe, of course, and then text, just button. And then, of course, we need to actually place the button on the screen. So we're going to use grid, column is going to be zero, and row zero. And then, of course, down here, we need to run the main loop. Otherwise, we are not going to see anything. So main loop like that. So let's try to run that. So Python. So as you can see, you've got this button here. And now that we have our ugly button on the screen, by the way, to style the buttons properly, I've got other dedicated videos where I actually explain you how to style it properly and how to add icons to that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So as usual, everything will be in the description box down below. So let's say that when we click this button here, okay, we want to call a simple function without arguments for now. And later we'll see more complex scenarios. So let's write the function up here. So up here, we're going to write def task, which is what we want to do when we click the button. And we just want to print something like button clicked. And of course we need to add it down here. So command task like this. So as you can see, I've just added task without parentheses, but why? I'm going to explain you why as usual. So when you write functions with parentheses, you're actually calling that function, right? But in this case, you don't want to call that function straight away. You want to call it only when you click the button. So to do that, you just need to write the function object here. So as you can see, this is the function object and then Python and TK Inter under the hood will call this function when you click the button. So basically that's why Python expects a function object here, because then when you click the button, it will actually call that function for you. By the way, if you like the content of this channel and you want to support it so that I can keep making videos like this, check out all the ways you can do that down in the description. You can, for example, get the source code of some of my videos, make a small one-off donation, or even use the affiliate links to join amazing learning platforms and a lot more. All the links will be in the description box down below. And thank you so much for supporting my work. I really, really appreciate it. If you write parentheses like this, when you run the application, Python goes through the code from top to bottom, okay? And when it's time to create the button, it goes through all the options. So here, mainframe, text button, etc. And then when it reaches the command here, it says task with the parentheses. It thinks that it needs to run this function to then get the function object that will be used when the user clicks the button. Okay, so let's actually try to visualize that. So you've got this task. Okay, when you run the application, Python goes through that and 
it gets to command task. So it basically runs this function here to get the command. So it thinks that that function actually returns something like this. So it thinks that by running this function, you get the function object that will then be used when the user clicks the button. But in this case, unfortunately, task doesn't return a function object. It actually returns none, okay? Because basically up here, we are not returning anything. We're just printing something, okay? So basically, something like this happens. So it goes through that, it tries to create the button, it reaches this, it runs the task, then task doesn't return anything, so the command becomes none. So then when you click the button, we don't get anything. Why? Because basically you're trying to run none and none is not a function object. So basically you don't run anything. So the task function is run just once at the beginning, just to get the command. And as you're not returning any command, then from that point on, the command is going to be none. And then when you click the button, nothing happens. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So let's actually run the application. Okay. So as you can see down here, you get button clicked, okay, straight away. We've just run the application for the first time and you get button clicked. Why? Because as I said, the first time it goes through all the code, it gets the command, it runs task to get the command, but actually task just prints this, okay? And then when you click the button, nothing happens. Why? Because when you click the button, you're basically trying to call none, but it doesn't work. It's like you didn't have any command, basically, okay? Let's actually do something like this to understand that better. Okay, so let's close that. Okay, so let's actually add another function here called get function object. And then I return just the task object. And down here, I do something like get function object. And I actually call it, I actually call the get function object. If we run that, as you can see down here, you don't get anything. And when you click the button, that works. Why? Because in this case, Python goes through the code, it reaches this function here, it calls this get function object function, but this get function object function actually returns the task function object, and that task function object will then be used when the user clicks a button. So something like this happens in this case. So you get get function object like that, Python goes through the whole thing, and then this becomes something like task like that, because that's what that function returns. So basically here, the command is going to be task. And then when you click the button, of course, that is run like this by TK Inter by Python, and everything works as expected. Of course, in this case, you could have just written something like task like that. Okay, it doesn't make sense to do something like this, but then it was just to, to show you that one, if you write the function with parentheses, then the function is executed straight away. And two, that tkinta expects a function object as the command so that you can actually run that when you click the button. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button to let me know and also subscribe to the channel as well for more videos like this one. So now you might be thinking, what if I have a function with arguments, for example, or how can I write it without parentheses? Don't worry, I'm going to show you different methods you can use to do that. First of all, let's actually delete this like that. Okay, like this, perfect. So now task will take two arguments, arg1 and arg2, and then down here, we're going to print them arg2 like this, perfect. Of course, now you know that you can't do something like first, second, because this is run straight away, etc., etc. So everything that I explained to you earlier, okay? So one way to do this is using another function, okay? So something like, let's say that you've got function here, and you do something like def call task, and then task first, second, like that. And down here, of course, you need to write call task. And this, of course, works. So you click and that works, of course. This is one way to do that. But if you have a lot of buttons and functions, it could be quite bad because you would have two functions for each button, etc., etc. So there is another way to do that, which is using the lambda. Let's actually delete this. Okay. And go back to task like that. 
So as I said at the beginning, we need a way to get a function object, but in this case with arguments. And we can do that, as I said, using the lambda, which basically returns a function object. So let's actually see a basic example and then we'll get to more complex things. So instead of task like that, we can just do something like, this is just an example. So this is not a working example. We can do something like that. Let's pretend that task is without arguments, just for the sake of simplicity to actually explain you a little bit how the Lambda works under the hood. So to make this simple, this basically returns a function object that if called, will run the task function. Okay, so something like this. Let's actually make an example down here. So command, let's actually copy this. All right, and this, when this is run, so the first time you open the application, this is run straight away. And this Lambda here will return something like new function object like that. And then when the button is clicked, something like this happens. So Python runs this, this returns a new function object. And then this new function object is like something like this. Of course, this is, as I said, to make you understand how things work. Okay, so basically you run this, you create a new function object, and this new function object is actually this function here. And then when you actually click the button, Python will do something like, like this. So it will actually run this function object. And this function object, of course, runs this function here, which is our function. So basically to recap, you run the Lambda, the Lambda will create a new function object like this. Under the hood, the function object is something like this. Okay. And then when you click the button, Python will actually call this function. And as you can see, as this function calls task in here, then task is actually run. Okay. This is a quite simple explanation just to make you understand how things sort of work under the hood. The really good thing about this is that with the Lambda, you can create function objects with even default arguments. And you can do that by doing something like this. So let's actually keep all of this so you can actually understand. So up here, you could do something like Lambda and then arg1 first, arg2 second, and then arg1 R2, like that, which is the same as doing something like this. So instead of doing something like that, you can do something like directly first, second. Of course, then you can have a lot of combinations and ways to do things, etc., etc. But after this video, you will have a basic understanding of this. So you can then make things more complex, etc., etc. So this will actually cover a lot of use cases, but I'm sure that some of you will need something even more complex, but you will actually find a way to do that. Of course, you could even have like a, a variable here. You could do something like var and do something like first and then use that variable here. Okay, you can do a lot of things, a lot of combinations. This is just an example, but you can then create more complex things, okay? And in this case, the Lambda will create a function object that will also remember the default arguments, okay? So it does something like this. So let's actually change here. So task second, and then new function object. And this new function object is like this, so first, second. So basically under the hood, you sort of, as I said, this is just an example to make you understand. It doesn't work exactly like this, but it's close enough so that you can actually understand visually. So basically when Python goes here and runs this Lambda, then it creates this new function object, which is the function object of this new function here that let's say the Lambda created for you. And this function object, of course, it remembers that it needs to call the task function with these two arguments, okay? So then when the new function object is called, then task is called with first and also second like this, okay? So now let's actually comment this out and see if that works as expected, because if it doesn't work, it's not good, right? <laughs> Let's try. Okay, so button clicked, button clicked, 
first second, first second, so it works perfectly. And this could be quite useful if you had, let's say, three buttons, okay, and you want to do different things for each button, but you don't want to write three different functions, but you just want to write one function and then inside that function, do one thing for one button, another thing for the other button, etc., etc. So let's actually first do something like this. So let's actually remove this, okay? So let's actually keep that. So first of all, up here, I'm just going to add this and this because we are going to add three buttons then here i'm just going to pass for a second here that then i will add okay so button one this is going to be button two and this is going to be button three okay down here two and three row one and row two like that and then task i'm just going to pass button one button two and button three why am i doing this actually let's do something like that why am i doing this because basically up here i'm just going to do something like button and then as you can see i'm passing the button name so this is the button one button two and button three because basically i want to then call the same function here and I want to do different things based on the button that was clicked. I could do this with an if, a leaf, etc. But I'm going to use the match statement, which I made a video about. And I highly recommend you go and watch it after this one. Because if you know how to use the match statement, it could be quite powerful. Okay. So when we click one of the buttons, because we're actually using the same task, task, task. We want to do something like button, case, button one. So if we click the button one. I'm going to print something like button one clicked. Of course, here you could have a lot of other things, not just that. Like that and like that. Okay, so button two and button three and button two and button three like this. And as I said, you could have more buttons and you could have more code for each button. So now basically for each of these commands, this, this and this, Python created a function object that we'll call for this one, the task function with button one as the argument, then for this, the button two, and for this, the button three. So let's actually try and see if that works. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so button one, button two, and button three, two, one, three, etc., etc., etc. So as you can see, you've created one function, and then with the lambda, you are actually understanding if you're clicking one button or the other and you just have one function for all the buttons and this is also useful when you have maybe let's say that you want to do one thing for the button one one thing for the button two another thing for the button three and then down here you have something like they want to do every time so whether you click the first second and third button they want to do something like print all i don't know something like that then this is quite useful because as I said, as you can see, you just do different things for each button and then you can do other things for all of them, okay? So now on the screen, you should see another interesting video about Python and TKinter, so go and check that out. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description to support the channel and get amazing things. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel as well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.